Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. And people say not to pass DTOs into your domain because of direction of dependencies. Sure, okay, whatever, but why? If you own the code base, what's gonna be the issue? How about we start measuring coupling instead of chanting rules? These rules are just a way to guide you down a path to manage coupling and reduce it. But coupling isn't evil by default. Excessive coupling is. You need to start looking at the volatility, the usage count, and the spread across layers. And this is all spurred on by this post and the comments. How do you map DTOs when entities have private setters? The different approaches they're thinking of. Passing the whole DTO into the aggregate root constructor, but then the domain knows about the DTOs. Using mapper extension classes, factory methods, and mapping tools like AutoMapper. So what's the right answer? All of them. Let me go through each one and explain why. Before I get into why you need to stop reciting these rules and understand why and be a little bit more pragmatic, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context and fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. As I've said, coupling inherently isn't evil by default. Excessive usage is, and really what you need to be determining is what's excessive. So what I define here is really kind of like a coupling score and there's kind of different ways to think about it. First is usages. If you have a dependency on a type, on a class, on whatever granular you want to think of, is what's the usage count of it? Is it one, two, a dozen, a thousand? That absolutely matters on how much you're coupled to something and what the usage is. What's the volatility? Is it something that you control that's relatively stable? Is it something external that you're depending on that has the iterates a lot and it's changing and breaking a lot of the times? Volatility matters on how much it's actually changing. In distance, what does this propagate through your app from, let's say it's a web app or an HTTP API, from all the way up from your web framework, all the way down to infrastructure? Where is it used at? Where is it located at? Across everything? Coupling and the degree of coupling is what matters most in making any of these decisions around any of these rules. So here's the example. I think the default kind of way people would go about this is mapping this manually kind of in an application layer, application service. So as an example, I have a place order DTO. You can think of this as a command. In our handle method here, we're just doing manual mapping. I'm taking that DTO, I'm converting into my domain entities, and to create that kind of aggregate, that primary entity of the order, I have this static uh, method called place which is ultimately calling just the private constructor here. And then we would have our invariants in there, anything that we need to check before we can actually place the order. So we're calling that, and then we just call save. So this is kind of the typical place that I think would people would do this, is that manual mapping kind of in that application tier, that layer. So that could be a good default, but as everything, there's trade-offs. The benefit to this is it actually should be very easy to test because we're just doing manual mapping to that DTO. On the flip side, because we're doing that manual mapping to the DTO, there's just more kind of boilerplate code that we have to do this. So let's go back to the original question here. Let's talk about specifically usage. How much, how many usages do we have of place order? How many times do we actually need to create our aggregate of an order to do that place order? Is there one application um, in our application layer that's calling it? Or are there dozens or even more? Well, that kind of really matters on do we even need to do this manual mapping? Now we can take this a little bit further and reduce that mapping code. So what I've done is I created an order factory where this is really just doing the mapping. So we're taking our DTO and actually creating our order. I removed that static method from our actual order itself. So this is now public and we can just apply our invariance. So really now we're just using the factory directly in our handler here. So it's slightly simpler because we are simplifying our mapping, but now, in kind of our domain factory, we're depending on the DTO. Now you might be thinking, hang on here, you just broke the direction of dependencies. This is chaos. But if the usage count was very low, let's say in my example here, that was the only place that place order was called and that DTO was very stable. Yes, I broke the rule, but that coupling that I created, what did it actually cause? What's the actual downside or negative effects from it? Sure, I broke direction of dependencies, but practically, what's the damage? So if I already broke the direction of dependencies, what's the value of that factory? 
Why don't I just remove it and have that mapping directly in our order? So the order accepts the constructor, accepts the place order DTO, and then I just have that mapping there. I've just simplified this even greater. Again, depends on the volatility and the usage. In my example, the usage was tiny. The volatility I'm saying is, is very stable, the place order DTO. Why am I jumping through all these hoops and in direction just to do something simple? If that was not the case, is this the best way? Probably not, but why? The whole point is stability, especially at the core. When you have directions and dependencies, your afferent and efferent coupling is different. And if those terms are completely wild to you and they seem like nonsense, they matter. And that's actually the reason behind this. I'll have a link in the description about afferent and efferent coupling and why it matters. Because almost the vast majority of kind of these rules and principles are based around managing coupling which is really what all this is about. So if you want stability at your core where your business logic lives, you don't want other things affecting it. That's why you want these direction of dependencies. Again, it depends kind of what your situation's like, the usages, the stability, is it gonna change? If it's not gonna change something higher level up, is it fine to have it within my domain? Maybe it is. You don't have to jump through all these hoops just to follow certain rules when they really won't even affect you. Context is king. So a few different examples. Let's say you have a public API and many different consumers and your contracts are version of those DTOs. Maybe you map that app your application layer or use some type of mapper there. Let's say you have some internal service that you own, some single UI. You own all the code. Maybe extensions or DTOs with factories that I was illustrating. Maybe that works best there. Maybe you have multiple inbound and outbound shapes for DTOs, then maybe you do wanna do some mapping. Specifically, a lot of this relates more so on outgoing, to me more so, um, where I feel like people wanna really change the, the shape of the output. So you have maybe some entity, uh, some composition of it, you wanna turn it into something, maybe use some mappings. And if you're just doing something early on, like, like you're just kinda of exploring something, you got low risk of like leaking internals out to your to the, your consumers, then just evolve the DTOs. Like go as minimal as you possibly can here. To me, be pragmatic. If your coupling score is low, then bend the rules. If your coupling score is very high, then be very strict and it can evolve over time. And if you need to document it and comment in code of why something is the way it is and you need to change it over time as the system evolves, then do so. And of course, I got to react to some of these comments of, oh my God, just change the implementation. You own the code base, right? Right, exactly. Good old DDD tactical design for when you're competent enough to follow a pattern, but not competent enough to question if it's really necessary to do all this nonsense. I agree with it. It's not all necessarily nonsense, but I do agree with the thing of just questioning whether you actually need it given your circumstance. And this one, what's wrong with domain objects knowing the DTOs? Somebody has to know. Unnecessary coupling, I disagree. It might not be unnecessary. Any change in DTO so the transport layer will inherently cause the change in the domain layer. And in some cases, make it very hard to, uh, at all. Agreed, in some cases. This goes back to usage and stability. And I love the actual reply, a part of this, which is, in my opinion, the biggest problem with kind of indiscriminate layering is actually accomplishes very little beyond adding in direction unless it's done in a case where it really matters. Why does it really, what really matters? Again, it's usage, it's uh, distance, it's volatility. I'd rather refactor at multiple call sites in a type safe language then bother with the extra indirection that's going to still need careful consideration and adding hacks between layers just to avoid a refactor. So my favorite part, get in the comments, let me know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Or do you have just blanket rules? Is there kind of gray area where you can bend the rules? Get in the comments and let me know. And thanks to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you want to support my channel, you can join it. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.